What's up guys? Have you ever wanted to broadcast your sick gaming skills to the world or maybe even turn your passion for video games into a career? I'm Ryan Burst with Ride Tech Gaming and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your very own live streaming account through Twitch step by step. So let's go. Okay guys, so right before we get started here, if you do watch to the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to add something that I feel like a lot of new streamers seem to miss when they first do their initial setups. So watch to the end and I'll make sure to cover that with you guys as well. So right as we get started, the first thing we're going to want to do is go over to streamlabs.com slash streamlabs OBS. And I'll have links for all these in the description down below. So once you get to this website, go ahead and click this big teal button that says download streamlabs OBS. So we'll click that, we'll click save, and we'll let it run for a second. All right, guys. So while we're waiting for Streamlabs OBS to finish downloading, if you could let me know who your favorite streamer is down in the comment section below. Also, if you find this video helpful in any way, if you could leave a like and thumbs up on the video, that would go a long way to support the channel. I'd really appreciate it. But all right, let's go ahead and hop back in. So once the installer is done downloading, we'll go ahead and run it. This will be the initial screen. We'll just go ahead and click I agree, figure out where you want to throw it. I'm going to click install. And it's going to run through the installer process real quick. And we'll go ahead and click Run Streamlabs OBS and click Finish. And this will go ahead and run it for the first time. So when we first log into Streamlabs, it is going to ask us to connect an account for either Twitch, YouTube, Mixer, or Facebook. We're going to want to click Twitch. And we'll go ahead and just log in and I'm going to use my test account for this. Click Verify. On this next section, it's going to ask you to authorize your account through Streamlabs, go ahead and click Authorize. It's a trusted program, so you'll be fine. And then we get into the main section of Streamlabs. And just to kind of a rundown here, this main black box here is gonna be the editor, and it's gonna show off all the main things that you currently have running to your stream. Right now it's blank, because we don't have anything set up. Okay guys, Future Ryan here, and I just wanted to give a heads up. Uh, Streamlabs updated, and I wanted to show you that they added this little mini feed here to the main screen. And everything else is the same. We can just kind of ignore the mini feed or we can minimize it with this little bar right up here and just slide it down and out of the way. And then it's not really an issue, but everything else is going to be the same. This section down here is going to be your scene section, which is going to show you your different scenes you have set up. So say if you want like an AFK screen and a starting soon screen and the main screen, that'll be where you set those. Sources is going to be where you find your game capture and your webcam captures and your alert boxes. And then the mixer tab is going to be all your audio levels. But from here, the next section we're going to want to focus on is this gear icon at the bottom left part of the screen. That's going to be the settings tab. So go in here and click the general. And in here where it has the three buttons, restart Streamlabs session, run auto optimizer and import from OBS. We want to click the run auto optimizer and click start. And what this is going to do is basically test your computer hardware and test your internet speeds and give you a pretty decent baseline of where all the settings should be. And from there, we can go in and kind of adjust things the way we want them a little bit more once we understand what we're doing. And so once we're back to this screen, we'll go back into the bottom left and click the settings again. But this time, go into the stream section. Now stream type, we'll go ahead and leave with streaming services. The service itself is going to stay to Twitch, but if you wanted to switch to Mixer or YouTube, you have that option here. We'll leave it to Twitch. The server is going to be the server that's going to be closest to you, and you want to leave it to auto and it'll just automatically do it for you. But if you wanted to switch it to one for whatever reason, you could do that. The stream key for you guys will most likely be empty. And in order to get that, we'll go over to twitch.com and make sure you're logged in to twitch.com and go ahead and click your little logo or your picture and go down into the settings tab here. Click that and it'll bring you to this screen here with all these buttons. We want the channel and video section right in here. Click that and it's gonna be your first box that pops up on the top. You don't really wanna show off your stream key to anybody because anyone having access to your stream key, they can stream from your account. So from here, we're just gonna go ahead and click copy for the stream key. And go back down into Streamlabs and paste the stream key right in here. The next section we're gonna focus on is the output section. We can leave it into this simple mode and this box here is gonna be really important. So this first thing here is gonna be video bitrate and this is gonna change depending on how fast your internet speeds are. Now in order to test your internet speeds, you can go to speedtest.net and click the big go circle button and it'll run through and it'll show you exactly what your upload and download speeds are. Mine are pretty fast at 80 megabytes per second and 70 for upload. 
For you, it's gonna vary, but that's why mine is set to 6,000, which is a pretty high bit rate. I wouldn't suggest going really any higher than 6,000. And even for me, I usually run around 3,500. So I'm gonna go ahead and set mine back to 35. But a general rule of thumb for you guys, if you have slower internet, if you're running about one megabytes per second bit rate, you're gonna want about a 750 for your bit rate. Now for two megabytes per second, you're gonna want around a 1500 bit rate. Three megabytes per second, you're gonna want 2000 bit rate. Four megabytes per second, you're probably gonna want 2500. And five megabytes per second, you're probably gonna want around 3000. And anything past five, you can probably mess around with 3000 to 3500, maybe going upwards of 6000. Now this next section, once we have the bitrate figured out, is gonna be the encoder. Mine's set to the hardware NVENC, which is gonna be NVIDIA's graphics cards. So if you have a high-end NVIDIA graphics card, you will most likely have that option, and this is the one you're gonna to wanna to run. If not, then you go ahead and run the software 264, and that's gonna run more processor heavy. But for this, I'm gonna click the NVENC. Audio bitrate is fine at 160. Now when we scroll down and we go to this recording box, this is gonna be basically set up to where if you wanna save your past streams to your computer to get clips or whatever you wanna do. Right here is where you can find the videos. That's where they're gonna be saved to. Right here is gonna be the quality of the videos. This is gonna be the recording format they're saved in and the encoder that they're using. Now the next thing we're gonna focus on is the audio tab. And everything here, you can probably just leave it at uh, defaults. So we'll go over to the video tab and this tab is really important as well. So base resolution is going to be the resolution of your monitor and the resolution of your editor. So everything that you're seeing here is gonna be tied into that. You want this to be the same resolution as whatever main monitor you're running. And since mine's 1080p, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that at 1080p. The output resolution is gonna be the resolution that everyone else sees from your stream. I tend to leave this at 720p so people can run my stream fairly well even on slower internet speeds so i leave it at 720. that's a good baseline for you to start with and then from there if you can run that pretty well then and you want to bring it up higher you can try that but i would suggest leaving it at 720 especially at first bicubic downscale filter is fine fps type common fps values you want that and the value itself you do want to run at 60 frames per second if you can especially if you plan on playing any fast-paced games like first-person shooters or battle royale games. But if you can't run that, then probably you wanna do 30 frames per second. But again, definitely try to get 60 if you can. Now from here, that's a, going to be about all for the settings. So we'll go ahead and click done. And now all the settings are set up for us. Okay guys, so now that our settings are fully set up, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add in some game capture ability. So down here in the sources tab, there's a little plus button right up here. We'll go ahead and click that and click on display capture. Now what this is gonna do is capture your entire computer monitor and display it off into your stream. And you can choose which monitor you want to use. So we'll click that and then click add source. We'll name it, we'll keep it the same thing, display capture, you can name it whatever you want. Click add source again. And from here is where you would pick which monitor you want to use. Since I only have the one monitor, I'm gonna click this one. And the numbers are just the resolution of the monitor. And then we'll just go ahead and click done. And once we have the display capture set up, it will pop up on the full screen editor here. And when it's selected, you have all these little white boxes all the way around the screen. And you can click and hold any of these to drag it in and rescale it and move it around wherever you wanted it. But for a screen capture, you're definitely gonna wanna have it full screen. So what we can do is right click it again, go down to transform and click fit to screen. And that's gonna go ahead and resize it back to your full size. Now that's pretty much it for the display capture. And this will capture all, all of our games the next thing we're gonna have to do is add in a webcam capture. So we'll go back to the sources, click the plus button again, and go over to video capture device, and then click add source. For this one, I'm gonna rename it webcam, and then click add source. You can name it whatever you want. And it should automatically pick up any webcam that you have hooked up to your computer. Mine found the Logitech Brio that I have right down here. And all the other settings are fine. We'll just go ahead and click done. And while it's selected, you can click and hold and move this around wherever you wanted it to sit. For this one, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the bottom right. I'm gonna resize it just a little bit. Now, a cool thing you can do is if you hold Alt on your keyboard 
and then click and drag one of the white boxes. You can crop it in to say if you wanted a little bit less in certain areas, make it a little bit smaller, and then you can go ahead and resize the crop and put it right back there so we can get exactly how we want it to be. And then from here, this is gonna be about it. You have your webcam, you'll have what'll be your game capture, and that's pretty much all you need. The next step is just to click this go live button, the bottom right, we'll click that. <clears throat> it's gonna open this screen here with these three options. You got your title, and you can of course put your title to whatever the title of your stream is gonna be. This is my title of my stream. The game that you're gonna be playing. So if you wanted to switch it to say you're playing Fortnite, you can just start typing it in and it will pop up a bunch of different games. Go ahead and click the one you wanna play. And tags are little descriptors to kind of tell people what's going to be going on in your stream. And there's a lot here that you can scroll through and find. And say if it's a, a game award show, you can use that descriptor. And it's just going to make people finding your stream easier for certain specific things. If you're playing hard mode, you can go ahead and click that. So once you find those, we'll just go ahead and click confirm and go live. And then you will be broadcasting to Twitch. I'm not going to click the go live button because I don't want it to go live right now on my account. I don't want a bunch of people popping in while I'm just doing a test run. I mean, that should be everything for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. All right, guys, so now that we made it to the end of the video, I did promise that I would show you something that I feel like a lot of streamers seem to forget when they first start, but it adds a lot of flair when you do have it. And that's gonna be the alert box. So what we're gonna wanna do is go down into sources, hit the plus button again, go over into this widget side and click the alert box. And what this is gonna do is give you these alerts, these animated alerts. Anytime someone hosts, donates, subscribes, or follows your channel. So go ahead and click add source. We'll leave it as alert box. Now there's a lot going on in this screen and I'll kind of go, go over it pretty quick. So right here is how you change each individual thing. So say if someone donates bits, that'll be a different alert, donations, subscribes, follows. And I'll just start with follows to give a general idea. So right now, if you go over to this test widget side, this little button here, you click the follow button. This is exactly how my alert looks when someone follows and we'll go in and adjust each one of these things. So this Yoshi picture is going to be the media and then there's going to be the text. I'll click it one more time and there's going to be the text here that we can change. Now for how it's laid out right now, they're layered on top of each other. You can put one below. So the media on top of the text. So the media will be here. Text will be on the bottom. And then this one gives you the option to have the media on the left side and the text on the right. I like it how it's layered. Now from here on the title message, you can change exactly what's said with the text. So say you want this text here to say something else, you can go ahead and change it right here. You can change the font of that text to whatever you want. There's a lot here, so you can go through and kind of just see which are which. You can change the font size and the font weight, and you can also change the color of the fonts. The next thing we can adjust is the media, so you can change the video or the gif and then the sound so it comes with a few different gifs you can choose from so if you just click this change media button go into stock files and click all files scroll down a bit and you have all these little options here that come standard with it for this one let's go ahead and try to switch it to the pikachu and again with the sound file you can click change media go into stock files and go to sounds and there's a bunch of sounds to start off with you can go through and play around and see which ones you like. The animation is going to be how the alert pops into your stream and it pops out of your stream. So right now, the bounce in and down, if I click follow, it bounces into the screen and comes from the upside right down. And then it's gonna zoom out and up to go away once the eight seconds are up. So you can click these and go through and change everything you wanna change in here. Again, just kind of play with it and see what you like. Now you can change the duration of how long the alert's gonna stay on the screen. And you can also change the animation of the text itself through here. And the delay of how long it takes for the text to appear. And again, just to kind of show you, this is what it looks like currently. And that's gonna be about it. You can do the same thing for each individual one, or you can keep them all the same if you want them all the same, or individually different ones for each different thing. And that's gonna be a kind of a short overview of the alert box. So we'll click done here. Now we can't see it on screen, but obviously there's no alerts playing. So if you wanna see any of the alerts on, click this little test widgets button down here and you click the follow button again. And you can see how big it is. And from here with these white boxes, we can adjust the size. So if you want it super big, put it right in the middle. 
so everyone's gonna pay attention to it. Or put it about, right about there in the middle. You can throw it wherever you want. And we'll click it again, just to see. And there you go. That'll be your alerts. And that's gonna be it, guys. That's uh, your whole stream, so you're ready to get rocking. All right, guys, so now you should be set and ready to go. I do stream every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Links in the description below. So if you have any more questions, you can hit me up there or in the comment section. Also, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and hit me with a like. Maybe subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this. All right.